the business of theater, you should definitely know what the show Death of a Salesman is about. Um, there are a few plays that have become such a significant part of the cultural zeitgeist as Death of a Salesman. Uh, it's been talked about and featured in music, cartoons, movies, and comic books. During its first run in 1949, most of us were not born in 1940. No. No, anybody in this room? You ain't gonna say if you were born like Let's go! Put your hands together for 1949! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what that's I'm here for. I feel like I was born in the early 1900s as well. I just can't really prove it. Like if you're if you're a tap dancer, you for some reason feel from the day that you're born that you're like a uh, hundred year old, you know, version of Bill Bojack Robinson. It's crazy. Um, so, <laughs> during its first run in 1949, it played 742 performances. Since then, it's been revived four times, winning three Tony Awards for Best Revival. Now it's coming back to Broadway, reinvented this in September, starring our amazing guest and my homie, Wendell Pierce, and the legendary Andre the Shield. You are 
energized, even though you have just spent every sinew of your body and being on the stage and given of yourself. You are filled with an energy and a satisfaction that you gave voice to that character. And then meeting people afterwards who were moved by it, then validated the evening even more. And the challenge becomes the next night when you stand in the wings and the house goes down and the lights come up and you realize you're at the base of Mount Everest once again and you have to climb and make every step or you will fall off the mountain. So I accepted the challenge and knew that the challenge itself would be the thing that gave me the energy to do it. And so I look forward to bringing that same energy and insight to these Broadway boards. <laughs>
on a nightly basis. You have to push that rock up to the top of the hill and then it falls down the other side. You have to walk around, push it up. This it go. If we don't learn how to deal, another concept that Wendell introduced, if we do not learn how to deal with our shadows, it's the one thing that we live with all the time. Whether you see it or not, no one can separate himself, herself, themselves from their shadows. During the pandemic, because the universe noticed that we had broken our covenant to be good husbands to the earth, that's what it means to subdue the earth. It doesn't mean to assault it. It doesn't mean to rape it. It doesn't mean to abuse it. It means to collaborate with it in growing. We violated that covenant. But the universe is giving us another chance. And we still ignored it. So now, you're gonna to have to come to one of the three places of healing that still exist in this world. The church, the temple, and the theater. In the character of Willie Loman, Wendell Pierce is not only the protagonist, but he is the antagonist because he spends that play dealing with his shadow. This isn't difficult to understand. You can't spend your life, all of it anyway, in the sun. The sun has to set. Why? Because then, the other 50% of the knowledge which is available to us comes with the night, the shadow. There would be no stars if the sun shone all the time. You have to have this contrast against that velvet sky. You finally see the phenomenon, the wonder, the awesomeness of the creation. That kind of contrast also exists in Death of a Salesman, in Willie Loman's brother, Ben Loman. You see how Willie is dressed in it? <laughs> Calm, accessible. You walk up to him, shake his hand. You see how Ben Loman is dressed today? <laughs> Cool, chill. You can approach it, but maybe you shouldn't touch. <laughs> Walked into the jungle and came out rich. <laughs> right. So, this play is going to give you an opportunity to visit the true definition of what the American dream used to be. Now I know you know your Declaration of Independence, right? Right? <laughs> Some of y'all trying to Google it right now. Y'all ain't seen it. <laughs> Check it out. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That, what, that is what we believe is essentially and, and exceptionally, well, let, me, let me leave that for, for the end of the sentence, but essentially and particularly the American dream, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we claim that as American 
exceptionalism. But there are those of us who cannot take life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for granted. Yeah, and I'm talking about race, and I'm talking about sexual orientation, and I'm talking about wealth and lack thereof. But also, there are those of us who cannot take it for granted because we understand that unbridled growth, and that's the definition of capitalism, unbridled growth. What's another example of unbridled growth? Cancer. If your cells grow without any control, you eventually will have cancer. That's what America has now. Cancer. Political cancer. And we need to be reminded about what one of the many great thinkers have been trying to tell us for 5,000 years. Avoid the extremes and aim for the golden mean, which is the balance. Death of salesmen is all about what happens when you don't concentrate on the balance of your life. It affects not only the individual, but the community that cares for this individual. Linda Lohman, the wife. Happy and Biff Lohman, the two sons. And, as I said before, Willie's Chatham, his brother Ben. I better stop now. <laughs> That's the question. to the world of uh, changing lives, whew, we got to take these conversations and really put them to the test in our own way as much as we possibly can out there. So, uh, and that's sure why... That's not Broadway con. This is, and that's uh, why we're in the theater. <laughs> because most of you are artists. I know that. This is my first time at Broadway con. All of them are artists. Yes. yes. All of them. Yes. All of you are artists. The fact is, what is art? Right? When we lie awake at night and toss and turn as individuals thinking on our lives, our triumphs, our failures, our hopes, our dreams, where we hope to go, where we've been, when we think on our life as individuals, it is in the forum of art that we come together, turn out the lights, and see the work where we do the same collectively as a community, together reflect on who we are, who we hope to be, where we've failed, where we've triumphed. Our dreams, our fears, and what our values are. Declare what they are, and then hopefully move ourselves with the work to then go out and act on it in our life. That's the role of art. Entertainment is the byproduct. The role of art is to be moved, to declare as a community who we are and what's important to us and go out and do it. That's the reason why we come and have this sacred exchange of energy. Sacred. It's always sacred. And those who are outside of the theater, when they see you and they see your transformation, they say, what happened inside of there? And you say, you should have been there something sacred happened. That's how it started on our journey. The other thing we always should remember is what makes a play like Death of a Salesman classic is the fact that it touches such an authentic part of our humanity that it speaks to us across time and place and gender and race 
This play is 70 years old. I am joining a fraternity of just a few men and women who have done it over the years on Broadway. This sacred community. And even with that small group, I feel connected to the first night it was done. Because it's the more specific you are, the more universal your humanity is. The more specific you are with your work, the more universal your humanity is. And that's what our production will be when you come to see it this fall. Death of the Salesman. Woo!